Hello friends! It's 11 o'clock at night and I'm starting a vlog. Because <laughs> I'm I've gone nocturnal like entirely like I go to sleep at somewhere between five and six every morning And I wake up at like one or two in the afternoon. It's ridiculous. Like it's obscene <sighs> I wish I could stay in the schedule when I have to go back to work because man I feel fine in this schedule like absolutely. I feel well rested I don't feel like anything like I don't feel groggy and tired all day like I usually do when I'm trying to force myself into the other normal schedule like ugh. I really wish I could live my life like this because it's the first time in a very long time that I haven't been exhausted 24 7. Anyway I have on the table a Regency short stays set of fabric actually this is just extra linen the the real stuff I have to do, work with is over on the ironing board because uh, I need to iron it and I just washed it um I thought I would cut the fabric out for that I did put it onto the board I also put a shimmy set onto the the board but into new business. I didn't put it into now playing um, because I got this pattern which looks bomb and I have been obsessively watching Emma over and over again, Emma 2020, and <laughs> they have shimmy sets up the wazoo and I want every single one of them. I think they're just ridiculous and I love them. So yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna go put this linen away and I'm gonna go iron that cutile that's sitting on my ironing board, which I did get. Um, for people who keep asking me, <laughs> I will do, I should do a buying guide, that would be best. But um, I <laughs> I don't know why finding corset supplies is so hard for everybody because I literally Google corset making supplies and it's the first thing that isn't a paid for advertisement. Um, I think it's called corsetmaking.com and it's it might say delicious LLC that is the name of the place and they have all kinds of corset making, bra making, all that kind of stuff. But they have cutile, they have all your boning, they have everything you're ever going to need to do corset making. So that's where I get my stuff from. So for all of you guys who ask me about it all the time, that's where it comes from. Okay, so last night I got through the lining before I started getting a headache, and so I I am not going to cut if I have a headache. <laughs> That's not happening, so I stopped. So I need to cut the cutiel now, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I've spent most of my day today working on COVID, 
Uh, for those of you who are new here and don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> I had an idea quite a while ago, maybe like February, because um, we were talking about how, how sad we were that we weren't going to costume college, and or that it would probably get cancelled and stuff, and I'm like, oh well, maybe since we all make videos, we should just do like a costume college-like experience, but basically do teachy videos over this weekend that costume college would have been, which is the last weekend of July, first weekend of August, like that weekend. So. I talked to basically all of Cause Tube and I was like, hey, do you guys want to do this? And they were like, yes. And I thought I'm the keeper of the schedule because it's my idea. So I'm like, I'll make a spreadsheet and keep an I you know, keep a schedule. And I am an admin on the Cause Tube guide, so I'm like, why don't we use that to like go ahead and and produce the schedule or whatever? So cool. I thought that was gonna be super low-key. <laughs> Turns out it's a lot of work to organize an event, <laughs> which I thought was just gonna be a bunch of people putting up videos. But we have so much stuff going on. We have a Discord server, so like anybody who's watching the videos or wants to participate or feel like they're at Costume College can go and onto the Discord server and like mingle and talk to other people and whatever. And we have we have rooms that correlate to the rooms that are at Costume College, so that's gonna be fun. Um, we're doing a virtual red carpet, a virtual Sunday undies. People are doing sprint challenges. We are gonna figure out, I think they figured out how to make ribbons, like virtual ribbons. Like, cause at Costume College we all collect ribbons and then we put them onto our badges and it's kind of a funny thing. And everybody gets them made and passes them out and stuff, so. We're making digital ones and so we're gonna figure out how to distribute those and stuff. I have turned my schedule basically into a program that explains all this stuff to everybody, so. The schedule can get found at the CauseTube guide Instagram account. I will put a link to that down below. It's not up. It won't be up until like the week before the last week in July. So, you know, quite a while. But we are organizing all the stuff right now. There's already, I think, 60 videos scheduled for that weekend. And we still have a month worth of people. Like, and I haven't put my videos in the schedule. And I know probably 20 more videos that are going to get added to that schedule already. So I'm feeling like it's going to be a crazy weekend of videos for people who want to watch those and then they'll just live forever so but we are also doing a bunch of premieres and a bunch of lives so I'm gonna host stuff on my channel that's not even my stuff I am um, going to moderate for a couple people and feed it through my channel so you guys can watch the live stream on my channel of I think Kenna and Abby are gonna do one on like the myth of sizing in extant garments and like everybody thinks that everybody has a 22 inch waist but that's not true. So they're going to talk about that. I'm going to go over to Bernadette's channel and we're going to talk about technology um, on how to make videos. So I'm going to talk about all the, the vlogging tech that I have, including all my tech toys. And we're also going to do a behind the scenes situation where we talk about what's going on behind the scenes. So that's going to be cool. I know that I might host for a couple other events, maybe one about inclusiveness in costuming with a panel of non-white cisgendered folks. So it should be a pretty big weekend. I have a feeling that I'm going to be swamped for the week before that, so I don't know. If, I mean, I'm definitely going to put up videos that weekend, so I don't know if I'm going to put up a video that week, but we'll see. I definitely probably won't be <laughs> turning out random vloggy content, but maybe I'll show you the behind the scenes of COVID because that's pretty fun. For those of you asking, it is a play on COVID <laughs> um, and Costume College, which we call Coco, but it's also like Coco on video, so. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff going on and I'm really hyped for it and I think it's very exciting. Some of it's going to happen on Instagram, but most of it's going to happen right here on YouTube, so anybody who wants to watch that stuff can, can do so and should be a really fun weekend. It will live on forever and ever. Well, most of it will, so you can watch the stuff even if you're not available that weekend, so that's great. I don't know if we'll leave the Discord server up though, so that might just be a one weekend thing. We'll see. Maybe. Okay, so I have all the couture cut out. I would like to say that if you do not have super strong hands or really sharp scissors, I almost recommend cutting couture one layer at a time because that is rough. <laughs> I did it double layered. Yep. Hands hurt now. Cool beans. I read the, through the instructions. I sat here and read them all. Um, and I am going to change some of the order of the way that this is done, but um, I'm also not doing back lacing stays. I'm doing front lacing stays. And they have an option for front and back lacing stays, but not just front. So... The seam allowances seem like they all still line up though, so I'm gonna give it a go. 
The first thing I'm gonna do though is put in the gussets and I have to do it eight times because I have to do four, two, two gussets for each boob. So that's four total, right? And then that's on the fabric and then also on the lining. So I'm gonna go get real good at putting in gussets and I'll be back with you. Okay, well, I completely forgot that it was telling me to zigzag all the edges. So I had to do that for all the pieces. And there was a lot of them. And then I went through and stay stitched around a line right there. Um, and then clipped that line down. And now I'm making it so that I can press a quarter inch out of this. Um, so that I can insert the gussets. So I'm just going to sit here doing that mindlessly for quite some time. <laughs> okay, so I have the gusset slash already cut and pulled back. Before I put these gussets in, I'm going to go ahead and mark this grid onto here because once the gussets are in it sort of stretches out this area and it's a little winky so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and put this on so I'm gonna get out my light table and basically tape these things together and then do the marking okay I got one of these done last night and then I basically wandered off because it was one o'clock in the morning so I'm gonna try to do as many of the rest of these as I can today and I'm modifying them slightly, like if this one has a modification, because this is the front piece, to add this stuff from the back piece, because I want to put the lacing in the front. And then the back piece is going to have a different modification to take basically this out, so this is just going to go farther. Uh, I am going to bone the back, so I will put in a boning channel though, which is this channel right here. So I'm just going to carry on and do that today. Hopefully that will get done because I would like to be finished with this and then ready to move on to sewing because I will be sewing straight lines for all of eternity on this. All right, I'm about halfway done, but I thought I would talk about this. So I use a light table for this. You can get these on Amazon. Let me get, there we go. So they're really thin. Get them on Amazon for like 25 bucks, no big deal. And then I just power them off of any external power source like that you would recharge your phone with or whatever. And they go brighter and then they can also go dimmer so actually working on kind of a dim setting is the most helpful in a lot of times because sometimes the bright setting is so bright you can't see the pen marks on your like if this is on here it's actually difficult to see the pen marks as you can see so if you have it on super bright so sometimes a dimmer setting is actually the way you want to go anyway i really like this toy I have these linked in my Amazon store if you guys are interested in getting one, feel free, it's an affiliate link, or you can just look it up and get one yourself. Okay, so I have them all marked as you can see, and here is the lesson in learning from Noelle's mistakes. <sighs> I made two of the same. So I need to flip this one over and transfer the marks to the other side so that I have them opposites, because that's annoying. So I'm gonna go make dinner and then come back and do this, but yeah, fun times. Okay, so we have two lining pieces with gussets on them and they are set in pretty well. I am fairly happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and put this, the lines back on this guy real quick and then set the gussets on the cotille pieces. And then we are ready to sew straight lines until the end of time. Woo -woo. Okay, we have spots for our boobies to go done in the cotille as well, which I feel pretty good about. They're wet right now because I had to, the, the blue dot was on it from the line I had to cut. So I'm using water to get rid of that, so those need to dry out. Uh, but I am past the adding gore section and ready to go ahead and stitching, stitch things together slash start stitching boning channels. Woo -woo. Okay, I have the entire back section done. Awesome. And I have it all pinned together so that I can start these boning channels, but I'm not gonna do that right now because it is 1.05 in the morning and it's time to go to bed. Well, it's not time to go to sleep, but it's time to go to bed. So I will catch you guys on the flip side. It's the flip side. So I have a day of admin. It's Thursday, somehow Thursday always becomes my admin day. It's my dad's birthday, so I had to talk to him for an hour. I slept in too late. 
I actually woke up before noon, which was awesome, and then I dozed until like 1.30, which was bad. So, cool. <laughs> I'm trying to force myself to go to bed earlier, I swear I am. It's just not something that actually works for me very often. Um, so I'm gonna do some of these boning channels today. Let's see what else is going on. I have a whole bunch of stuff to do for COVID. I need to do, today's my day for a costume guide. Today and tomorrow are, so I have to do those posts. There was some other admin stuff I have to do. So I'm gonna do some of these boning channels now and like get a bunch of them done. And then when I get tired of this, I'll go do admin and then I'll come back and do some. I also have a meeting with a friend tonight. So yeah, I feel like today is gonna be packed. So I'm gonna do our the best we can. Okay, so I wanted to cho show you guys how I do this. I don't know if this is the right way or not. It's just how I do it. So because linen is super squidgy, squiggly, what, and even if it's not, even if it's just cotton, what I tend to do is do some of the stabilizer ones first and then go in and do fill in for all of these sort of things. So I'll definitely run the channels up the middle. So there's three here. I will probably run at least one of the outside ones just to stabilize that spot. I might run here, I might run like this one that goes diagonal up here and the top one just to get like the lining fabric attached in a very like it's still fully pinned and not weird yet kind of squiggly way so that everything sort of works out from there. So. That is my strategy on this. Hopefully that makes sense to y'all. Okay, so I have the stabilizing ones in this side. And the reason you do that is so you can take all these pins out because these pins start poking you and they start hurting. <laughs> you just want them to go away. So I do all these so I can take the pins out and now it's really stable and then I can do all the filler. Um, I d <laughs> this one is a mess. <laughs> I may pick some of those out and redo it. Um, I did stitch in the ditch for this one because, uh, yeah. I wanted it to be perfectly in the middle, but I might actually pull this whole one out and maybe even this one because these will all hold it now um, and redo this entire one. I don't know how I would do that though to figure that out, but um, and I might do it from the top side because it's one that's perfectly centered down your back, so it would be nice if it was actually straight. Okay, so now I have all of the stabilizer bits in but none of the fillers so I'm gonna do the filler next and I do it methodically so I'm just gonna go from one side of the corset to the other and I'm gonna do like all these straight lines and then I will do all of these lines and then I will do all of these lines and then all of those straight lines and that's basically it okay so about half of the filler pieces like this half is all done ready to go so I will iron that at some point but I'm gonna do this half first but first I'm gonna grab some food um this didn't take that long probably like half an hour to do all of that. Um, it's been an hour or so since I started sewing again, like doing all of the stabilizing channels and the filler channels. So I would say don't worry about it too much. Like if you're stressed out about doing this, it's not that big of a deal. I did fix the wobbly bit that was here. I'm still considering redoing this one, but I'm not sure. You can pull out the threads sort of with a seam ripper and like a needle if you need to. I'm pondering it. Part of me is like, meh, it doesn't really matter. Part of me is like, just get it right. So we'll see which side wins. Okie dokie, they're done. I had one, I did fix that one, by the way. I had one that was like wobbly AF. Basically how I remove them if they're in a weird way is that I pick out the section I don't want and then I just sit there and pick it out with a needle. Like pull, 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 pull. And they come out fairly easy. By the way, my linen has arrived. So this is the teal color that I am gonna use for the main and then my accent color. I'm holding my in and out cup because my husband went and got me in and out. Um, and this is my accent color. I was unsure about the brown with the teal, but I kind of like it. Okie dokie, while I talked to my friend Sarah, I sat here and corded this section. There are four sections to the back and sides. So I got that done and it hurt my hands. So I might do this other section and then stop doing this and go ahead and sew in the channels over here. This should be much easier to cord because these are much shorter and easier to deal with kind of channels. Um, there's just these two long ones here and then this is the only part that I think is going to be a problem at all. And it's not really even a problem. It just kind of hurts your hands to do it. So make sure to take breaks. Be hand healthy. The front looks really good. It looks like this. There, it's some. It's it makes these weird little spots sometimes and I think that's when I like 
put it down and push on the fabric so I gotta remember not to do that and then I'm, I gotta figure out a way to get these spots out but luckily this is white so you know there's lots of ways to getting getting whites whiter there's a lot of new people here since the last time I made some corded corsetry so this is my pro tip doll needles uh, they're not usually curved I did this by <laughs> cording it um, and probably also the last one so Anyway, they're super long. They are not, they are sharp for sure. I mean, you could definitely hurt yourself on this, but they're definitely less sharp than regular needles and they have a huge eye. But the length on them is the key here because you can get almost most of the way through most of the cording and just squish it down a little bit with these. And so I highly recommend using doll needles to do cording. I did try to use one of those, what is this thing called? like a turner basically. I've tried all kinds of gadgets to do this. This this one works fine as long as you have a full path through, but the second you need to like break through, it, that doesn't work. So anyway, these are just from my experiments. Dull needles is the way to go. Also, I'm gonna try a little bit of hydrogen peroxide on here. To all of you who are gonna yell at me and scream that hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide eventually ruins fabric. I'm like, I know, but I will not wear these forever, so it's probably fine. These are not extant garments. It's okay. Okay, so we have half of it corded, so that's awesome. I'm gonna go sew the channels into this guy, and hopefully I want to get at least these channels sewn tonight if possible, and then I can worry about cording all the rest of this stuff maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Okay, well, I ended up having to go do all that admin work I told you guys about earlier that I didn't actually do today. And then I came back and I got at least one of these finished. I have one more to finish and then all the rest of the cording to do. We'll see if that gets done tomorrow or not. Would be nice, though. I'm going to squirt this down so it, the ink goes away. And hopefully that'll happen overnight so I won't have to worry about it. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow. Hello, it's tomorrow. I've spent my entire day so far. Oh, I'm shiny because I have face oil on and I'm wet from the shower. I have spent the entire day listing the podcast because like when you start a podcast, you have to list it with all of the different apps. So like every single app that people want me to list this in, I have to manually go make an account and like submit it to. So I think there's like well over 10 or 12 of them now. People keep suggesting them, so I'm adding them as I see them. But... I will say, for people who are clever and know how the internet works, that in order to list them, you have to have a podcast live. So if you were to figure that out and go hunting, you could very easily find the podcast if you wanted to listen to it early. Just saying. Okay, so my hands hurt like super bad from doing that cording and I have so much more cording left. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do those lacing channels on that last piece. Maybe I'll do a little bit of cording first to like get some of it done, take a break, go do that. And then I have Disney Squad tonight. I think we're watching Princess and the Frog because Disneyland announced that they're revamping the Splash Mountain, which was based on Song of the South, which is crazy racist. And I haven't gone on that ride in probably 20 years because every time I ride on it, I'm just like, this is racist. So I don't write it anymore. So they're changing it to Princess and the Frog, which I'm really excited about. And it should be a pretty easy transition for them because, you know, it's already like Bayou-y. So that works out really well, which I'm excited about. So we're watching Princess and the Frog tonight, so that should be really fun. Anyway, I'm going to try to get the stuff, the channels in and the cording done and then maybe cut this vlog off because it's been a week and then start another one and finish the stays in that one. Oh my gosh, I was sitting here like in pain. I put this one in and I was like, ow. And then I remembered that Peggy gave me these. Oh my God, this is what I was using before. Look how long that is. It's like almost the entire length. Oh, these are sexy AF right now. I love them. I'm gonna try this. Okay, one, these needles are baller and they make things on my hands a lot easier. And two, sometimes you get it to the point where like it just won't barely come out like it's stuck just the needle head stuck in there and all you have to do when that happens is just kind of roll it around like this and it will ooch its way out so you can already see it coming out there so yeah it's 
basically all you have to do. Okay, so this is what the back looks like from the outside. And here is the inside. And actually these holes healed up already pretty good. Like some of them are almost gone. You kind of like iron it while it's still hot. Like give it a little scratch and try to move those fibers around a little bit. And the holes start closing up pretty fast. So yeah, if you use a different lining like silk or wool or whatever, um, it might change how that reacts, cotton for sure. I have, um, my other one is done with cotton on the inside and the holes didn't heal up quite as well. I mean, I think the linen is just primo for that, especially this is a pretty loose weave we linen, so it's kind of, um, you know, available for that to happen, to be able to go back well. That's kind of why I chose it. Also because I'm hoping that it keeps me cooler. So anyway, I'm going to go work on the rest of getting this one corded and the other one sewn and corded and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I have the top part of this uh, corded and I need to just go finish like sewing these things on the other one. But the reason I'm not doing these ones currently on this one is because I am very close to running out of butcher twine. So I already ordered some more, it'll be here on Sunday. So. The worst that's going to happen is I will not <laughs> accomplish the entire goal today, but mm, that's probably okay. I'll just finish it during the next video. So my goal today is to finish sewing these things on that one and then cording as much as humanly possible before I run out of cord. Okay, I have this guy done and drying, although you can start to see the blue coming back, so i got to squirt it some more. So i just just um, letting it get... Uh, unblue and dry before I start cording it. Woo! I made it to the end! I did it! Woo! woo. Yeah! I got them all done. And with just a very little bit left on that guy. So there's still a new one coming Sunday, but that'll be for whatever other cording adventures I need to go on. And with that, I think I'm gonna call this vlog. I am so off schedule. Like I used to post on Tuesday or Wednesday, and now I'm like Maybe Saturday or Sunday, I don't know. It's Friday right now and it's been a week of putting this together so far. So I think I'm gonna call it and put a vlog up for you guys and just continue this in the next one. So if you're new here, go down below and leave me a little comment about who you are and what you're into and how you found me and all that kind of stuff because I like meeting new people and there's always new people here, which is really exciting. And if you're old here, then I would love to know what you're up to, what you're working on, what you're listening to, what you're reading. I'm on book five. I think I'm reading Death Masks of uh, the Dresden Files. I think I'm on five. We're trying to power through them really quick because the new one comes out on the 14th of June. No, the 14th of July. I don't know if I'm going to get there by that date, but I'm trying to read all of them before it comes to pass again so anyway if you like this video do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't and i will see you guys next time with another vlog bye guys